What's up y'all? Today we're out here in Mossheim, Tennessee at my buddy's house. We're going to be putting in a mini split AC unit for him. Uh, this is something I have a bit of experience with. I did this for about two years uh, professionally. Put in like 10 to 20 units a week for about two years straight, five days a week. So I know what I'm doing a little bit. So uh, I figured it'd be worth making the video, showing you guys how I do it. And yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so first things first, I start with the indoor unit. We've got this mounting bracket here that it goes on. We'll go ahead and mount that to the wall at our desired place. We picked right here because it's going to give him his best coverage of his house. He's currently in the process of uh, like remodeling and fixing this place up. So this is going to go from here back into the bedroom and his other office studio bathroom and then kind of help with this upstairs space too. So we'll go ahead and get this mounted, cut, get a hole saw, cut a hole through the wall for the line set, the control wire and the drain. And then we'll go from that. So let's get this thing mounted on the wall and a hole cut. All right, so we got the bracket mounted, made sure it was level, made sure we hit studs, very important. And then so per the instructions here, you might not be able to see. So you've got the distance from here to here. It is going to be six and five eighths from this little notch over and then inch and seven sixteen or uh, 13 sixteenths up. This is all going to differ unit to unit. This is just what we're doing here. So now we've got our little hole right here. We're going to take a hole saw and bust through the wall. So whenever we do this interior or the exterior hole from in here, we'll put a little bit of a downward slope on it. So drop the hole saw just a little bit to help with that drainage. Make sure for sure it's not going uphill. All right, then we go like this. Like I said, a little, little English on it. Here's our first layer of wood. All right, there we go. Yep, I actually see some uh, tar paper in there too, so they've got a vapor barrier, that's good. It's a girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you see daylight. Um, that means we did it right. All right, so we're through the wall. Next thing we're gonna do is go to the outside and we're gonna feed the control wire up and through. Okay, so. So you gotta find the hole in here. Should be a little silver hole. Feed it through. It'll pop out right there. All right. Get our strippers. Take about, yay amount, about four inches or so off of it. They make it real easy for us here, especially when you use the correct wire. It's color coded, so black, black, white, white, red, red, green, green. Easy peasy. We got our control wire hooked, all hooked up. I went ahead and taped it to the line set connections and the drain to make it go through the hole nice and easy. We'll go ahead, I might actually throw a little bit more on that front just to make it easy. Please do not fall. Got this little bit of flap up here just so it doesn't get caught up in the wall when I go to shove it through. Go ahead and wrap that once just for Good measure. We'll take that off once we get it out there, but just helps that penetration be a little bit easier. Grab it right here. Help guide it through. Out. So we'll lift up from the top. There's tabs that kind of point upwards towards the ceiling. We want to hook that in. Clamp. And you're all hooked up there. Now that indoor pretty much is done on the inside for the time being. We'll go ahead and put this panel back on here. Put the front on the uh, put the, the front cover on it. And that's pretty much it for the inside. All right, so we're out the we're out of the wall there. You can see our little line set sticking out and our wire coming down. So now what we're gonna do, we got our drain, we got our line set, the length of line set. So we're gonna roll all this out, marry it together, and then tape it up. We're gonna just use some electrical tape. 
Uh, it will eventually be covered. We don't have the covering for today, but there'll be a protective covering over it in the future. So the electrical tape's fine for the time being. All right, so we got our line set here. We went ahead and you take the, the nuts that are on the indoor unit. We went ahead and take those off. You want to be sure to remember to put these on before you flare. I just did that a second ago where I started to flare these without the nut on it. And that's the most important part because then you'll have to just undo your flares and do it again. So we'll just go ahead and get these flared up so we can attach it up there. All right, so we got our line set. We got our connections sticking out here for the indoor head. Uh, we're going to go ahead and gently bend these just slightly so I can get a better connection with these. Uh, I've got my drain here also and the control wire. We're going to loosely connect the, uh, the line set to here and then crank it down, uh, connect the drain, and then tape it all up. Yeah, so we gently start bending these down, especially when you get into these smaller lines, like the quarter and, and smaller. Those uh, will kink real easy. So you wanna make sure that you don't, you don't kink them and you just kind of work them down. And the ones that are attached to the head are usually stiffer than your actual line set, so you can take a little bit more, but still got to be careful. Okay, now we got them hand tightened on here. We're going to go ahead. Usually you'd want to use a torque wrench on this so you know exactly how tight you're doing it. I don't have a torque wrench and I've done this enough. I kind of have a good feel for it. So I'm just going to use my regular crescent wrench and some channel locks. Okay, so I've got those pretty much where I think they need to be, but since I'm not using my nice precision tools that I used to use, I'm gonna leave this untaped here and just kind of loosely place this down. Um, and then we'll kind of get it roughly where it needs to go, everything kind of roughed in more or less, get the bottom attached, run the vacuum, make sure it holds, and then we'll come back and tape everything up because if, if for some reason my flare wasn't good or I'm not quite tight enough as I think I need to be, then I can come up here and adjust, fix, whatever, without having to undo all the mess of tape that I'm gonna end up putting on this. But I will go ahead and marry these together just to make it a little tidier. So I like to put the drain on the bottom because you want it to drain down Put the control wire on the top like a little little hot dog in a bun and we'll tape it up doing little loops again like we did when we were initially connecting it all together okay so we've got the line set connected up there like i just mentioned before uh i haven't buttoned it up just up up there just yet because we're going to like i said test everything before i do came down since we're gonna dodge this garage door here put a little bit of an elbow in it um, it's not resting in its final place but you know you can kind of get the idea you just want to gently work that if you're trying to avoid something we've got the outdoor unit placed here just on a couple of pavers and we've got it all set and opened up here so we'll have our wire connections and our line set connection just got to take the nuts off of there like we did up, up above take the nuts off Put those on here and then flare it and repeat like we did up above. There's too much tension on it. I'm having them together. All right, so we got these connected now. I'm pretty sure those are as tight as they need to be. You expose this front here, 
So this is where we're going to attach our gauges and do our vacuuming. So we're going to run the vacuum pump, make sure it gets down to where it needs to. So we know that means our flares are all good and we can release the refrigerant at that point, which are stored in these two. All right, so we let the vacuum run for 15 minutes. I ended up changing to my new gauges. The other ones I had were a little dinky and there's actually, it was missing a rubber gasket so it didn't hold the way I wanted it to. Right now it's holding pretty well. There's a little bit of a movement on the gauge. Um, I may have to go back and recheck everything. It might've just been one of these things loose on the gauge itself, but we're going to let this sit for 45 minutes now. Um, if it moves any more, then I'll recheck. I just went and rechecked all the, the connections before I changed to this one. Um, if it's still giving us issues, I may have to pop them off and check all the flares, but I'm assuming it's this. So we're just going to let this sit for 45 minutes while we run the wire. All right, so we popped in our wire from upstairs. That's where the panel is. We, caught, we popped in. Here's our 14-2. We're going to go bay to bay. I'm going to probably end up having to put a 2x4 on this wall to secure the wire to because it's really hard to secure wire to center block. And then we're going to bust a hole through there and then connect to our disconnect. disconnect. All right, we're getting pretty close. We had to make one trip to Lowe's so I could get some more uh, tap cons. But we got a storm moving in, as you can see here. So it's a little bit of a race against the clock. So I kind of skipped ahead a couple steps here. We got the disconnect connected. So I'll show you that real quick. All right, so you got your disconnect. Both ones coming from the panel are gonna to go to the, the line side. You'll see where it says line right there. You wanna tape that white wire black just so people know that it's live. And then for our whip going to the unit, we've got red, black, and our ground. And that's all connected up there. So that's good to go. Got our whip coming along to here. Our unit's all wired up. You wanna match these to the numbers as they go up top. And yeah, we're pretty much good to go. We're gonna we're gonna get finished getting this fixed up and buttoned up up top, and open these king valves. Let that refrigerant fly. But yeah, so we're gonna try and put a little little speed on this because we do have a storm moving in. So we got our caps off, king valve, take an Allen wrench. You hear the refrigerant start to go. Same down here. So it can get through. All right, now it's open. Gonna put the caps back on and button this bottom unit up. It's all done. Don't hear any hissing, so that's a good sign. Not like we would think that's gonna happen anyway. Because we're professionals here. All right. Covers on. Put your screw in there. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. Yeah, put our screw in there. And there we go. Outdoors all hooked up. Oh, storm's moving in. All right, but we're done out here. I spray foamed the hole. We're all buttoned up here. Looking pretty good, ready for the cover once we get to that point. But for now, I still need to put a couple of two holers down here to hold the line set to the cinder block and the outdoor will be completely done at that point. All right, we got the supply wire from the panel, the home run coming down. I put this two by four tap conduit to the wall so we had something to connect to loops out and into the disconnect out there. All right, so it's the final piece here. I always wait to do this last so we don't have any power going to the unit. Nothing gets goofy. So I've got the breaker connected here. We're going to pop it in the panel, do the little punch outs in there, and this thing is good to fire up. So let's get that done. So a moment of truth here. You want to do the honors? All right, we got movement, that's good. All right, what mode are we on? So, okay, these have icons, so this one's gonna be a snowflake for cool. 
So let's go ahead and bring the temp down because 76 is, let's just push it down as low as it goes. Let's let this thing really show us what it's got. 60. And you always want to wait to hear that beep. When you hear it beep, that means you know it's heard the command. Sometimes you can do that and it won't do anything. So it's going to take a little while because it's new, it's fresh. But we'll get some cool air coming in here in just a minute. It's already starting to cool off a little bit, but mostly that's just air movement right now, but it should be blowing cold any second. And we are in business. As always guys, I appreciate you hanging out to this part of the video. Um, there's a couple notes that I wanted to add here at the end. Uh, I pretty much did that install by the books. There is a couple of things that we would do differently when I did it for a company. Uh, we had access to nitrogen, so I would pressurize our lines. So if you have access to that, that's definitely something I would recommend doing before vacuuming, just so you can know 100% that the uh, that it holds pressure and everything like that. The vacuuming does help to evacuate the lines, getting all that moisture out. Uh, that's something with these DIY kits. I feel like they overlook a lot like for these mr. Cool DIY kits You'll get off Amazon or something um, They say oh, yeah, you don't need the vacuum pump any of that stuff, especially if you live in a place like I do I live in the south um, There's a lot of humidity here and that humidity gets into your lines while you're installing it and it can um, Prematurely corrode your line set. So they say I've never seen that happen, but that's just what they tell us uh, So yeah, that's just something to note if you are trying to do one of the DIY kits, it's probably not a bad idea to get some gauges and uh, a vacuum pump and, and evacuate it or have somebody come out and evacuate it after you've installed it, even if it's just to test to make sure you don't have any leaks. Also too, there is a uh, certain like um, amount you're supposed to be torquing those lines, like a, a rating or whatever of what it's supposed to be torqued to. Again, like I said, I had a, in the video, I said that we had a, like an electronic one that would do, 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 like tell me whenever it was tight enough. But, um, I did it so many times. Like I know the pressure and the feeling of it. So for the average person, those things are pretty expensive, but I don't know, might be worth trying. Also my flaring tool, I got a cheap little flaring tool from Lowe's, uh, that I've been using for all this and they're terrible. Like I, they're really hard to get, uh, good flares with. So it might be worth buying a, a nicer flare tool too if you do want to do this as well uh so yeah thanks for sticking around if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that as usual you know where to put them and uh we'll catch you on the next one thanks